This is Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly update on Viking athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Enjoy the action and excitement of NCAA Division II athletics at Augustana. Welcome to another edition of Augustana Sports Scene. On this week's show, we'll catch up on Augustana sports action as we spin our Augustana sports update. We'll also visit with basketball coaches Tom Billiter and Dave Krauf. And a little later in the program, in our Augustana Sports Focus, we'll put the spotlight on Augustana's national championship in women's cross country. And we'll take a look at what's ahead on the Augustana Sports calendar for this week. So let's get the action rolling. Here comes Augustana Sports Update for this week. Augie Sports Update is brought to you by Shonemans. Last weekend, Coach Tom Billiter's 16th ranked Augustana men's basketball team picked up a pair of NSIC road wins at the University of Mary and at Northern State. The Vikings, now 7-1 overall and 4-0 in the NSIC, bounced Mary 58-45 and defeated Northern 76-68. In the Mary victory, Augustana got out to a 30-17 halftime lead before securing the win in the second half. Dre Murray led the Vikings with 19 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists. Cameron McCaffrey added 15 points as he topped the 1,000 mark in career points at Augustana. The Vikings shot 46% from the floor and 86% from the free throw line. Then on Saturday night, Augustana never trailed as they hit 10 three-pointers to get past Northern State in Aberdeen. After pushing out to a 36-30 halftime lead, the Vikings held off some Wolves runs in the second half to pick up their fifth straight win. Cameron McCaffrey led the offensive attack with 20 points, with Cody Schilling adding 14, Yuri Malashenko 12, and Dre Murray 11. Schilling also grabbed six rebounds and dished out five assists. Malashenko also snared six boards and nailed four three-pointers. Augustana shot 43% from the field and 67% from the foul line as they picked up their seventh consecutive victory over the Wolves. In women's basketball, Coach Dave Krause's team split a pair of road games. The Vikings rolled over the University of Mary 93-65 before falling to Northern State 61-53. In the Mary win, the Augustana ladies shot out to a 47-27 halftime lead and continued to blitz the Marauders in the second half to pick up their sixth straight victory. Alex Feeney and Faith Tinklenberg both had double-doubles. Alex scored 14 points and pulled down 10 rebounds. She also led the team with six assists. Faith notched 13 points and grabbed 12 boards. Shantiva Ashley was the points leader with 16, with Molly Hayes tacking on 15 and Lydia Nelson 12. The Vikings out-rebounded Mary 50-35. Then on Saturday night at Northern State, the team started fast as they led 18-1 and then 32-26 at halftime. But cold shooting in the second half doomed Augustana as their record fell to 6-2 overall and 3-1 in the NSIC. Faith Tinklenberg paced the Vikings with 15 points with Molly Hayes scoring 13. And in wrestling, Coach Jason Reitmeyer's sixth-ranked team picked up a pair of victories as they dominated Dakota Wesleyan 40 to nothing and Northwestern of Iowa 43 to four in a triangular held at the Elman Center. Winning twice for the Vikings were T.J. North at 125 pounds, Jason Jeremiahson at 141, Nate Herta at 149, Marcus Edgington at 157, Tom Davies at 165. Carl Sirk at 184, Jeff Nielsen at 197, and Michael Roberts at 285. That's our sports update for this week. When we come back, we'll talk Augustana men's basketball with Coach Tom Billiter. Stay with us. Augustana Sports Scene is brought to you by Sanford Health, improving the human condition. By Shoneman's, your trusted building center since 1888. And by Mid-Continent Communications, part of your community. The all-new mid-size 2012 Passat with dual-zone automatic climate control, Bluetooth, and scheduled carefree maintenance included. The Passat has more premium standard features than its competitors. That's the power of German engineering.
hold a moment. Keep friends and family close. Witness the passage of time. Replay the glory days. Relive magical nights. Create memories to share. How do you capture a lifetime? One picture at a time. Life Touch. Photography for a lifetime. Hi, I'm Chad Greenway of the Minnesota Vikings. I'm a big fan of how youth sports can help kids stay physically fit. But as an athlete and a parent, I'm also very concerned about safety. Millions of sports-related concussions happen every year, and many go unrecognized. That's alarming because the wrong treatment can slow recovery, worsen the condition, or lead to permanent damage. Please learn the facts about concussions and help protect our young athletes. To learn more, visit SanfordHealth.org slash heads up. The Augustana Men's Basketball Report is brought to you by Sanford Health. Joining me now is Augustana Men's Basketball Coach Tom Billiter. Well, Tom, last weekend the Vikings took the long road trip up to Bismarck and on to Northern, playing Mary and, uh, and the Wolves, and uh, wow, what a super weekend for the Vikings. A win on both floors. Well, that hadn't happened, you know, as we always have kind of made light of in a weird way, but Mary's had our number, you know, it's our second win up there uh, in the last six or seven years. So uh, played well. And, you know, it, it, what a great time to go take that trip. The weather was perfect. You know, we didn't have the elements to, to contend with. So um, what can sometimes be a four hour trip from Mary to, to Aberdeen that right. night, pulling about three in the morning was only about a three and a half hour <laughs> trip. So, I mean, I'm being yeah. on, you know, we got right. in about two o'clock in the morning and um, now looking back on it, we were pretty fortunate because we just had great weather, full moon, right. and we were able to get there as fast as possible. But kids well, played hard and, and it was a good game. Yeah, let's go back uh, to the Mary game. Talk about that one. Well, you know, Mary's they lost a lot of seniors and so they're a little bit in transition brought in some uh, very talented transfer guards uh, Turner and Robinson but I, I, I did think that um, you know the one thing that was different than than a year ago obviously was Anthony Moody I mean he could just break down right. anybody's defense he was playing 40 minutes a game and um, he was always a you know our ne arch nemesis you know he just had our number and so I thought our guys came out ready to play um, we had a nice 13 point lead at halftime um, we had extended it to 2021, um, kind of controlled the whole game, never trailed. Uh, anytime you can go on the road for two games and never trailed a second, um, you're playing pretty good basketball. So, you know, it was just a solid game. I didn't think anybody was stellar. Uh, I thought, you know, different guys contributed at different times, uh, but obviously our perimeter game was pretty strong and the bench was solid. Yeah, super win, 58-45, and then, uh, as we mentioned, the long uh, trek down to Aberdeen. And a hard-fought game, Tom. Vikings came out on top, 76-68. Yeah. And, you know, you got to remember, A, playing in front of their crowd, which is very nice. Um, B, you know, that's a team that beat Butler. You know, I mean, they are feeling pretty right. good about themselves. They only had one loss going into that game. Um, they had beaten Wayne by about 16 the night before, so they could rest some of their guys. And so going into it, um, you know, you knew it was going to be a heck of a battle, and that's exactly what it was. It was just a, a game that we did, we did lead the entire game. Um, went in at halftime up six, and to be honest, girl, I thought we should have been up 15. You know, credit them. You know, it was 10 points with under a minute to go, and they cut it down to six. We could have extended it to 14. And we were tired uh, mentally, just fatigued, and that's to be expected. And so, you know, halftime was really much more about um, what we have to do as, as men to reach down and, and just understand every game. Right. And, you know, it, it was very little X's and O's other than a few adjustments on, on a great, you know, player and prior. Uh, he and Tutsloff are just fantastic inside, but uh, really was happy how our guys came out and competed. Yeah, it was a uh, super victory, and there were a lot of stars, of course. Uh, Cameron McCaffrey getting 20 points to lead us, and Cody and Dre and the regular guys. But one guy that uh, really stepped up for you was uh, Yuri Malashenko. Yeah. He hit four threes, and he got six rebounds. Oh, yeah, and you know, he's such a great kid, and he works so hard, so it was good to see him uh, have success. We had a couple. You know, Yuri, obviously, uh, Alex Richter, you know, hit a couple key buckets and played hard for us. And even little things that you don't see with David Fritsch just making hustle plays. But, Bill, I got to tell you something about that game that I thought was, was really interesting. Teams are so focused on Cody. I mean, that guy is being guarded every game, every second, being crowded, being held, being, you know, everything. And that's just opening up great things for Dre and Cam. And I'm telling you what, they're taking advantage of it. And it's hard to put all that emphasis on one when those other two are so good. Yet when we needed a bucket, they cut it to two. Got Cody a ball where he could score no matter what, who no matter who was guarding him. He hit two in a row, and 
you know, down the stretch, four straight free throws. So he yeah. still was able to still do what we had to do to secure a win. But uh, again, just a, a super team effort. Well, the maturity of Cody too now that uh, you know they're taking some things away. He's assisting to other guys. He's playing great defense. So. You know, I think that maturity is coming Absolutely. forward here in his senior yep. year. Yep. Also, uh, Tom, it's uh, back into the NSIC this coming weekend. We're back home. Two tough games. Uh, Minnesota Crookston on Saturday, who took Moorhead to yeah. three points at Moorhead. Yeah. Moorhead's undefeated coming in here Saturday. Fans, these are going to be two great games. Well, the funny thing is, and, and Dave might have alluded to it, I don't know, but uh, it's finals, and you know that. We have finals on Saturday, you know, and so our kids have a lot on their plate right now, and so we're going to try to give them some extra time off this week and, you know, really get them focused academically, and hopefully the stuff we've been working on since day one will come through on this weekend because we won't do a ton of prep. Um, you know, you, you defend our, every screen a certain way. No matter what you see on the floor, we've gone over it. There should be no surprises out there, and you go back to your basketball, you know, instincts and what you've been taught and just have to go out and play versus really preparing due to the fact that I need my guys focused on their right. grades, you know, and, and uh, you know, this is a trying week as we all remember, you know, finals weren't easy and our guys need to be able to do both. Yeah, well it is a big week. Fans, the Vikings play Minnesota Crookston, 6 o'clock Saturday, Minnesota State Moorhead, 6 o'clock Sunday, Augie is 4-0 in the NSIC, 7-1 overall. Great basketball team coach, fun to watch. So. Well, I hope we keep being fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> hope so keeps come on over way. to the Elman Center for great college basketball. Good luck, Tom. Thanks, Bill. The August Nana Women's Basketball Report with Coach Dave Krauth is next. My alley was a tumor and it hurts in my head and it's right here. I had three favorite colors, red, pink, and purple. I like to draw berries, princesses, and clothes. I want to be, when I grow up, a clothes modeler. It models clothes. This is my victory. Why do you play? Why go through all the pain? The endless practices? For the victories? For the joy of playing the game? Or do you play for something even greater? If you already know the answer, we're the network for you. Midco Sportsnet. This is how we do sports. The Augustana Women's Basketball Report is brought to you by Midcontinent Communications. With me now is Augustana Women's Basketball Coach Dave Krauth. Well, Dave, the Vikings hit the road last weekend, took the long road trip up to Bismarck to the University of Mary and then on to Northern. And on Friday night up at Mary, it was uh, a very nice start for the Vikings to the weekend. Yeah, I mean, our first real road test and, uh, you know, we responded well. You know, it probably was a combination of we played well and, and uh, Mary didn't. But, uh, you know, we just did a lot of things, including making threes that uh, make life pretty easy. And, and the game just fell into place for us. Yeah, what do you attribute the success to? Well, I mean, we shot it well. and and. Uh, in, in, in addition, I mean, I just think our energy level is always quite a key for us, and we we defended well, and and uh, and we got good balance. We just got mm -hmm. some uh, contributions from almost everybody that played, which went we went ten deep, and and it was just a good team effort. Who were the best performances in that game? Well, it was you know hard to pick one out. I liked uh, Faith Tinklenburg really over the weekend, be, but uh, she had a fairly solid game. Got to a lot of balls, had a dozen re double double. Um, and probably her play, but you know, like I said, I mean, I just our two freshman posts: uh, Emily Bowes, Andrea Whitney, uh, Sophie Kenny, a freshman uh, guard, came in and gave us some good minutes, and we were in foul trouble. And then we had you know a number of people that were in double figures. Right. Well, a super win for the Vikings uh, up at uh, Mary, not an easy place to play. And then a uh, long trip between games down to Aberdeen. The Vikings took on Northern. Interesting game, Dave. Started like a house of fire, but uh, they came back and we came up a little short. Yeah, you know, our MO kind of going into the weekend was slow starts. We just had really struggled getting going and we got good starts in both nights and again started well. Realistically, we probably should have been up by 25 points if, if we'd have made some uh, easy ones early, but it ended up by 16-0 or about a, you know, that was how far up we got. And then they chipped away and, and you could just see the energy turn. We also dealt with a little bit of foul trouble and, uh, and just weren't as sharp in, in so many ways, both, uh, you know, with an energy, but also just mentally sharp. We broke down sometimes and let their sh shooters just have some threes to help get them in it. Well, Northern's a, a good ball club, so uh, 
we got a split. Uh, we're three and one in the uh, conference, and uh, got to be feeling good about that. Uh, this weekend, back home, and uh, fans uh, starts out with uh, a tough basketball game. And I know those of you out there may have a hard time believing this because we don't seem to give a lot of right. credit to Minnesota Crookston. But Minnesota Crookston comes in here at three and one. Uh, should be 4-0, and all, and they have an outstanding team, Dave. Yeah, they, they were a real solid team uh, last year, probably even in, in going back a couple years. Um, and they deal with that, the fact that you know a number of their programs end up being kind of the cellar dwellers. But their women's team is uh, really a solid team and, and very tough to guard. Uh, and they've gone on the road and won, and uh, it, it'll just be a, a tough one, and, and we'll have our hands full both nights. Okay, let's, Crookston, what kind of team are they? Well, they're, they're kind of a balanced team where you get uh, multiple people that will dribble attack you. I mean, even like their six foot, three, four type players are all attacking you with the dribble and a lot of motion and, and they tend to get to the free throw line a lot and just do that. And, and they play a lot of people and, and really give you a lot of energy. Well, the Vikings play Crookston at four o'clock on Saturday here at the Elman Center and then Moorhead at four o'clock on Sunday, two tough conference games. We were talking before we went on the air, Dave, uh, we're only two weeks into the conference season in women's basketball. We're on top of the league. Everybody's been beat at least once at yes. three and one. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, I'll sound like a broken record, but, uh, you know, the women's side of it is so balanced that, uh, I mean, there's just going to be weekends that, you know, at some point you just can't be surprised by it uh, anymore. But it is, uh, and Moorhead will be one of those teams that really from a talent standpoint is right there again. Angie Jedvig uh, is a kid there that, uh, if it isn't for the Arlen kid at Wayne State, she's a player of the year candidate in any league. Yeah, well, two great games here on Saturday, 4 o'clock Crookston, Sunday, 4 o'clock Moorhead. Good luck, Dave. Thanks, Bill. Up next, Augie Sports Focus. Stay with us. I was half the person I used to be, literally. I knew that if I didn't have the strength uh, that I'd back in my body, I'd never be able to ride my Harley again. And that was one of my other goals I had was to be able to get back on the bike. Just being able to get out and experience, you know, the area and the surroundings on the back of a bike is so much different than being in a car. You can smell the smells as you drive through. You can hear the sounds. It's just great. This is my victory. When I was young, I loved helping my grandfather with projects. From building a birdhouse to odd jobs around the house, we always got our supplies from Shoneman's. I remember the smell of the fresh cut lumber and all the bins full of nails, nuts, and bolts. Today, my projects are a bit bigger and so is Shoneman's selection. I rely on them for everything I need. Shoneman's in Sioux Falls and Harrisburg. Expert advice, everything you need. You can always do it right with Shoneman's. Augie Sports Focus is brought to you by Shoneman's. Joining me now is Augustana Cross Country Coach Tracy Hellman. Well, holy cow, Tracy. Uh, let's jump up in the air and celebrate the Augustana Vikings National Championship in Women's Cross Country. A couple weeks ago in Spokane, Washington, the men finished sixth. It has been one great year for cross country. Talk about your feelings. Yeah, we're still on cloud nine. I mean, hearing that national champion uh, is, is something that I, I, it doesn't get old, I can tell you that. Um, and it was a year that I, I'll never forget in terms of just uh, what we had to go through to have the success we had in, in, in both men and the women. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty fun to be in the spot. Well, let's focus in on the uh, women's race, and we're going to have Kelly Kogel on here uh, a little uh, later uh, to talk about uh, kind of her special part in the race. But uh, the ladies' race, really something. Yeah, we, we thought we had a good team going in this year, and I thought we were going to have some success at the National, but as the course of the year you know, went through, uh, we had some ups and downs, and then uh, we had some things happen that I thought you know, would shake a lot of teams, but we, just, we had a lot of uh, you know, kids that stepped up and really kept the, the motivation and the, the positive energy, I guess, going. And I think I knew probably two weeks before the National, we had, we had a good shot of placing well, but I still didn't think we could win, just because it's just such a hard thing to attain on, on a national level. And um, that day was a day that will go down as you know, one of the best ever in history, and, and we had you know, five All-Americans. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had the best uh, spread, which the time from the first runner to the fifth runner, mm -hmm. that any other team. Um, and we finished. I didn't think we had won. I thought still we were second or maybe third, and that would have been right. pretty exciting. We would have been happy about that. But to hear that to us win, it, I was shocked. I was just, yeah. I didn't have words. And so, um, 
it was a year I think that uh, we're going to really remember, but yet um, we only graduate one girl, right. Kip Kelly. Right. So right. Uh, I mean, it's hard to look ahead, but wow, we got a lot yeah. of potential in the women for next year too. Yeah, yeah and uh, we're going to talk, as I mentioned, with Kelly Kogel here in a little bit. But what a story! Uh, and and we'll we don't want to spoil everything, but just your feelings about Kelly. Uh, she went through uh, her father's death. She ran. Um, had to be tremendously emotional for yeah. the ladies. Yeah, it was emotional for them. It was emotional for me. I mean, geez, I, I really had a tough time getting through that because mm -hmm. she was so special to our team and it was so hard on her ice kissy. And I, we didn't, I didn't know if she was going to race. I really didn't. And I never pressured her to. We told her that if she didn't make it, we'd be there for her regardless. And to see her show up in, uh, uh, in the airport with our team and then to race the way she did, it's, yeah. it's a storybook ending in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I would never imagine her to do, do what she did. And so, and it really carried us, you know, it carried our team. And I've told people before, if she doesn't run the way she runs, we don't win, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so we, that was great momentum and uh, it was something that uh, we're, uh, we're still celebrating. <laughs> yeah, well the national championship is huge and we know that, but the men also ran well, sixth yeah, place. It was, it was really tough because here it is, our women win the national title, and then our men equal the best finish ever in our program history in six. They were six last year, and so we, we had cause to celebrate them, too, because it was such a, a great finish, the best ever, for again, for our men. And they were very excited to do that. We had two All-Americans. Uh, Paul Yak was 11th. Ryan Evans was 32nd. Um, that was uh, third year in a row we've been in the top 10 in the men, and so you know the guys were very uh, happy with their finish they were they also were super excited about the women women winning yeah. but uh, it was a total team effort by both squads well Tracy you have a phenomenal program here again congratulations to the men and on the national championship also the national coach of the year women's coach of the year with me now is outstanding Augustana senior women's cross-country runner Kelly Kogel Kelly it's great to have you here on Augustana sports scene and uh, it's quite a story. The ladies, congratulations, winning the national championship out in Spokane, Washington on November 18th. And uh, quite a story here with uh, Kelly, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But first off, Kelly, you're from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, after uh, high school, had to pick a college. Why did you choose Augustana? I did. I told my parents I didn't want to go anywhere in the Midwest at all. But uh, I was talking to Tracy, and on my visit, I came up and... It was a big visit day, so there's about eight other track recruits, and we all went out to eat. And I just tell the team was really close together, and we'd be spending a lot of time together. I knew I'd make a ton of great friends up here. So yeah, yeah. Well, we're glad you came, and you saved your best race for last, which we're going to get to here now. Uh, quite a story here with Kelly, and some of you may have uh, seen the story in the Argus Leader or heard about it. But her father Donald uh, was uh, stricken with cancer and uh, passed away on November 11th, a week ahead of the uh, nationals and uh, Tracy wasn't sure whether Kelly was going to run or not, but uh, she did, and, uh, and it was a fantastic finish for her. Talk about the emotions of all of that and then why you decided to run and what, what, what it was like running that race. Yeah, well, we kind of had been talking the whole season, and I talked with my parents about it you know, throughout the year and before I left in the fall for camp, and um, I was able to spend quite a bit of home, time home this summer and go Tracy's really good about working with me, being able to go home during the season on weekends. So I was able to go home and we just talked about it and kind of kept everyone on the same page. And I tried to prepare myself, even though you can never really prepare. But um, so the day after it happened, I went on a long run with uh, one of the girls on the team who stayed with me that night. And we just talked about it, you know, if I could run, if I could even make it through the race. And we made it through the long run, and I just decided, you know, I want to do this. We've been training since um, August, since team camp, and I just knew that the team was going to be there, and I just wanted to get to nationals as soon as possible. And my dad always, I knew he was so proud of me, mm -hmm. and he talked about running so much, and I'd call him every day, and we'd talk about running and school, and he really just wanted me and my siblings to kind of continue on and do what we were doing and be successful. And I know he was just he would have done anything to be in Spokane with us. Yeah, well, it's a fantastic story, and uh, he's certainly proud of you today after the, after the race. The, uh, the race itself, miserable conditions. Talk about what it was like, and what, what, what was motivating you to run? The race was so cold, and I just knew it was our year. Since my freshman year, we'd been talking about getting a trophy. Like, this is our year to get a trophy. This is our year. We hadn't had one. So I decided, you know, this is the year to get one. 
And before the race, we were just all so motivated and it was freezing cold, but you know, it was cold for everyone else out there too. And the whole time I was running, I was just thinking about the last thing my dad said to me um, when I talked to him was, congratulations, I'm so proud of you. And I just felt like he was confused that we had already ran. And I just, I knew that he was there with us that day. And so that just kept pushing me. And then when Tracy was screaming his head off, we can win, we can win. <laughs> You know, that just oh, it pumped us up and yeah. pulled it off. Well, a fabulous uh, story and a tremendous race. Uh, all American honors for all of the ladies. Uh, congratulations. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, now uh, it's the end of the line for cross country and uh, you'll be uh, moving on and graduating. So what's your major and what are your future plans? I'm business marketing and I'm going to work for a couple years in Sioux Falls, build up my resume, and then I plan to go to grad school for management. Well, Kelly, it's been great to have you at Augustana. Tremendous finish. Good luck. Thank you. The Augustana sports calendar is next. We'll be right back. Here's to all you crazies. You, the hometown diehards, the fanatics. That's what a fan is, after all. You live or die by what happens on the field, on the court, and in your heart every time your team plays. So, let your freak flag fly. We're here for you. Midco Sportsnet. This is how we do sports. There's just times that it's, it's, there's a lot of dark darkness. I would be in church looking at the PowerPoint and just thinking, uh, this could be my funeral, this could be my pictures up there. The day came when I could actually stand in front of our congregational family and I could sing a solo. And that was so huge because I had forgotten how beautiful a song could be in my heart. My word is celebrate. The August Dennis Sports Calendar is brought to you by Sanford Health. Well, let's take a look at the August Dennis Sports Calendar for this week. Saturday, December 17th, basketball at home for doubleheader action against Minnesota Crookston. The women tip off at 4, followed by the men at 6. And on Sunday, December 18th, it's doubleheader action again at the Elman Center as the Vikings take on MSUM Moorhead. Again, the women start at 4, followed by the men at 6. And remember, for radio coverage of Augustana basketball, you can hear the men on KIKN FM 100.5 and worldwide at KIKN.com. And the Augustana ladies can be heard on KXRB AM 1000 and worldwide at KXRB.com. And for complete information on Augustana athletics, go to our website, GoAugie.com. That's it for this week's show. This is Bill Gross thanking you for watching, and I hope you'll join me again at this same time next week for another edition of Augustana Sports Team. Have a great week, everybody. You've been watching Augustana Sports Team, a weekly update on NCAA Division II athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Learn more about Augustana College in Sioux Falls at augie.edu.